All right, five, four, three, two, one. You know, no, it's never not on one. <laughs> no, it's never actually. You know, we just—it's just tradition. Honestly, it doesn't actually help. I used the I used the 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 film to to sync up the audio. It's so. hilarious. <laughs> you know, we, we, we just do it for tradition around here. But hey, hey, everyone, welcome back to Tavern Adjacent. Jesse from You Might Be a and d thank you so much for coming on the show. By the way, is this your official face reveal? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, I did a little, like, uh, D&D show with a friend of mine uh, that was, like, very, very small. So I don't know. I don't know. People could have seen me on that. I plugged it a few times, but... Yeah, but other than that, probably. <laughs> yeah, awesome. You know what? I, I am honored. When I did a face reveal, I made a whole big deal out of it. So, you know what? I, I respect the low key. Yeah. Well, I uh, I told my audience, uh, my, my papa once said I had a face made for the radio. So I don't often show, <laughs> I often don't show myself. So I went to, I went to, to, um, to shul, to, to school for, for journalism, mass communication. Yeah. And I went and, you know, I was doing the thing and I was doing a class where, you know, you, you run, you run a news show cause you know, that's part of the, part of the gig. And yeah. I was doing behind the scenes stuff. And all of a sudden the professor was like, Hey, you want to, you want to do an anchor thing? And the student cut off the professor was like, I don't think it's a good idea. And I was like, what the hell dude? He's like, and he, he said, yeah, look, crispy. He just doesn't have a face for the camera. All right, with that acne, Ooh. and I was like, "Ooh, you piece, fu fuck you, dude." I was pissed. That's rough. That was <laughs> me. That was that was that was the rudest thing anyone has ever said to me in public. I was. Pissed. God, imagine getting intercepted like I, by. <laughs> <laughs> The reason, no. by the way, the actual reason I shouldn't go on the thing, I had an actual reason, is because I wear glasses, it reflects off the lights, and I can't read the teleprompter without them. That's why I shouldn't go on the anchor thing. Not See, because, that makes sense. Yeah. I think yeah. I look fine. <laughs> Tear. <laughs> but anyway, dude, thank you so, for, so much for coming on the show. I, got, I, got, I hit your content because of D&D Shorts, and I was just blown away. Because at that point, you had only uploaded like three videos, and already you had some solid edits. You were good, the voiceover, the script was, was solid. You know, how, how much have you done this before you might be a DD? and d uh, Yeah, so um, this specific style of content, uh, not very much. Um, but I, I think it kind of was inspired a little bit. There was, you know, there's like pointy hats out there and he's got his thing. And then there's like, like RuneSmith is out there and they've got their thing. And then there's like D and D shorts. And it, it felt like everybody had this very specific, um, Spot. niche. Yeah. Niche. Yeah. In the YouTube space. Yeah. And I, I felt like there was a, there was just a little bit of room for somebody to really like dive into what makes the subclasses not necessarily strong, but what makes them really fun. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and sometimes being strong is fun. Like I think the blade singer is like broken and that's why it's so much fun. Yeah. Right. But um, there, there's a, there's a uniqueness that D and D brings to the specificity of the subclasses. And I hadn't seen anyone yet kind of, um, kind of explore that in like a way that I thought was like not very long form. Like you could talk about it for five hours, but eh, that's not my, that's not my steez, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, like before this I did, like I, I've been editing for f forever now. Um, and a part of the reason I kind of started this was a little bit of a fluke in that, I was like, you know what? I need to get my chops back together. Um, I'm going to start looking for maybe like an editing job. Um, and uh, so I was like, let me put this together. I'm going to make like a portfolio that I can show to people. Like, this is what I can do. Like, like, yeah. like watch, watch my stuff. Um, and then like the first one popped off and I was like, oh my God. And then the second one got good. And I was like, oh my God. And then it's just snowballed and it actually turned into something. And yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it at all. So. The origin point of Crispy's Tavern was me being a really salty person. Well, okay, I haven't actually told the story, but I, every time I tell us, like, tell ask people, ask like, why'd you do this? Um, I was like, oh, I saw Crit Crab, and oh, I saw Ginny D, and I thought they were doing cool stuff, so I wanted to do yeah. something. You want to know the actual reason? It's because I was taking a class on audio recording, and there was this mm. kid who was trying to show up some of my password because I did a podcast um, randomly. And it was just because some of my friends told me to. It's so bad. 
like <laughs> awful. You were talking earlier about your about your early stuff. What? So I did a podcast. Yeah. What did you oh, do before man. this? Uh, everything. We tried everything. We did let's plays. We did like a short podcast. We did uh, uh an abridged series that uh, like I, like looking back, there's parts of it I love and parts of it where I'm like, oh god, that was me. <laughs> but, like we <laughs> no, did we up. did everything like stupid memes that I like edited together. But really, like through it, I just kind of fell in love with the idea of like I can make this and it's just whatever I want to say. And it can be stupid or it can be silly or it can be like interesting and like I can just throw that out there. So I mean you're a funny dude. I remember the the the, the Drake joke in your in your Drake Warden video. I was <laughs> oh, on yeah. the floor. I fell <laughs> out of my chair. I had not laughed that hard in a long time. That hit. That was so good. <laughs> Were you uh, like yeah, did I, you finish writing that line? I just went that was good. <laughs> so I, I often run things past my girlfriend. Good idea. She's very – Solid yeah. idea. She's very funny, and she knows where that line is better than me sometimes. There's often been times where I'm like, this is – this is over right and she'll be like yeah do not put that in the video um but i ran that one past her and she went oh shit that's and good like, yeah that's a good it's one just a, it's just enough yeah by the way always always a good idea to run your stuff by other people i love living alone like it's it's a great blessed thing uh but dang sometimes i i, I will just be recording a thing and be like wow i really wish i had someone to run this by yeah yeah no it, it it's, it's I mean, I, I, I need to give her credit as like an assistant editor on the scripts because she's she, she's the person I go to first. And every once in a while, um, like during just like like rush time or whatever, um, right before I like post, I'll be like, just just watch, just watch, <laughs> like make sure I didn't like screw this up too bad. Um, and she'll be like, no, that's that's good. That's funny. And so. Yeah, she's uh, she's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I I actually I I upload so much. I don't actually watch the videos before they go up. I just I'm like, ah, I, I didn't mess anything up, right? And there's a, there's <laughs> been I think I've counted four times where I forgot to decrease the volume on the music because you know you have to balance the audio to the. Oh sure, yeah. Yeah, and that makes the video unwatchable, so I had to delete it. And obviously, like tanks after that, and I'm like, uh, I have like tr I'm traumatized from the four times that's happened. Never, never forget. And editing's so like editing's so weird in that you have a vision in your head of what you want this to look like, right? Like like I know what this joke is supposed to be. I know how this uh, uh, skit is supposed to play out. That kind of thing. And then once you get into the edit, you're like, I didn't fucking work at all. No. <laughs> and you oh gotta redo God. it, or you gotta add something, or you gotta change the way something sounds. Yeah. Yeah, there was one skit I did. Um, I don't even know what it was based on, but it was like a skit about like mythological accuracy and God of War. And I'm like editing oh, okay, it, and I'm yeah. just thinking like, dude, this is not funny. Like this is bad. And I'm gonna be honest, I never laugh at any of my own jokes, almost ever. If I laugh at my own jokes, that's how I know it's a banger because I have extremely high, like yeah, yeah. I never laugh. But um, the point is that even though I'm like used to not laughing at my own stuff, I'm sitting there thinking like this sucks but i've already put like 40 minutes into putting it together so i'm like okay if i delete this now yeah. i'm gonna hate myself so don't and then there was a comment though in the video that was like i don't really see how that skit with the god of war thing fit into the vid and i'm like yeah yeah i know i know i know yeah <laughs> oh yeah that was a thing on the on the old stuff uh especially um my one of my voice actors one of my best friends in the world and he's incredible um but um Early on, he would <laughs> – so we'd have points in this abridged series where it would be, like, screaming, right? Uh, and he'd be, like – instead of going, ah, and actually screaming, he'd be, like, ah, and, you know, into the mic. But it sounds like somebody whisper yelling so they don't wake up the neighbors next door. Yeah. And that's the exact line somebody put in the comments. And I – like, I had to be, like, well, you're right, but also fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I never – at this point, I just I just, I just, just learn, you know, you learn to let that, that kind of thing just, like, wash off of you. There's If, if yeah, I've got something yeah. funny to say – to a to some crappy comment then i'll say it but there's also running the risk that they'll have something funnier to say and then i'll just feel stupid so you know <laughs> yeah but yeah this turned into something real and i genuinely um enjoy it i have a real job um and uh, it's fine but you know turning this into something that could like potentially be a career is 
a dream come true. I mean, I'm, I'm never expecting to be a bajillionaire, but you know, making a living talking shit. Oh no, it's that great. sounds amazing. I'm yeah. not going to lie, man. It's awesome. <laughs> like it's pretty, it's pretty premium. I started this when That's I was great. <laughs> when I was not that old, <laughs> let me tell you. And this is pretty much, I mean, I have another job too. Um, and I am rearing to quit. <laughs> Oh, I get it. I get it. I yeah. just need to. I just need to cap. Just a couple more months, and I can clap that off. But yeah, um, no. The in terms of like how you choose which specs to do, and also like um, I do want to ask because besides yeah. the specs and the races, is there anything else you're kind of interested in doing? Because you know, like you Absolutely. do a really good job covering the specs, but like I'm kind of curious if you got any other plans. Yeah, so um, and I've thrown this around in my Discord server. I feel like a place that's lacking in the D&D community is talking to people who are new. Um, it's it, D&D is such a niche, and tabletop in general, I should say, is such a niche hobby that I feel like people who want to get into to it, either they played like BG3 or like they've watched Critical Role or something, and they want to get into it, they feel like this huge brick wall of of bullshit. Like, oh, there's all this you have to learn, and then the community can be weird about like new people. And then, oh, like, yeah. It just, <laughs> yeah, it feels... I, I would I would I would say for somebody who's brand new it feels scary. Yeah. Um and so um my like I have this idea of a very like short form, maybe five minutes or less, um like you might be a newbie kind of show. Like yeah. and it goes through what's on your sheet, what does AC mean? And just very quickly like hits those points, you know, maybe a little jokey and um and but like like tries to cover that really well and i i've been tossing that around i haven't figured out yet a great way of i haven't written a script um but uh that's been that's been something i've been mulling over for a while um and then with like one D coming out um that might be even a better avenue for like people who you know 5e has been around for forever <laughs> yeah nine years now almost yeah uh, Ten, uh yeah 2015 uh, almost nine years almost nine years it was 2015 yeah 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 so um <clears throat> so people who uh have never done tabletop and want to get into it would be like oh one D is the new shit let's get hop on it and then we can kind of introduce them that way like i said i haven't planned it out but it sounds like a fun avenue and i'm interested so we'll see yeah, I haven't checked out any sort of the playtest material in a long time. The last thing I saw was like the player homes uh, thing they were running by, which I which I really liked. Yeah, yeah, I don't dive much into because I, I I figure it's going to change. Uh, yeah. into the UAs. Yeah, um, I'm interested in it. Like like I'll br- I'll brief them, but I haven't. Yeah, I haven't do- dove much into uh, into one D and D yet. Yeah. Do you so. do you dive into too much like like homebrew stuff like MCDM or third party content cuz like that's pretty much exclusively yeah, I, consumed nowadays. Yeah, um I actually so the campaign where uh I played with a buddy of mine not that long ago we played um The Siege of Castle Rend. Um and that's an MCDM um game. Yeah. Um so oh, The Siege of Castle Rend. <laughs> yeah, and they use the um Last time I had Bob it? World Builder, and he's a heretic who does not play MCDM stuff. Like specifically, really? oh, he well. is a heretic. <laughs> a heretic. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, it was the uh, what? What do they call it? The the siege mechanics. The the uh, armies yeah. and ca- yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a lot Warfare. of that. And that was the thank you. Yes, um, I got you. And that was a lot of fun. Um, that was a good. Um, that was a great. Uh, uh, entire campaign uh, i'll shout him out real quick um if that's okay with you all good uh, dude. yeah so it's ages of einor and it was the siege of castle rend in fact the blade singer character that i rolled up for that game was the inspiration for my first video so <laughs> hell yeah there you go full circle you know so. yeah exactly um, yeah, if you if you play with me, when you play with me, it, uh, get ready for a lot more MCDM design stuff because I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fanatic. I'm a tr- yeah. I, I I have a I have an un, un an unreasonable amount of love for their monster manual. I'm sure my fans are tired of hearing about it. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of yeah, that that's a really good idea for the future of your of your um of your channel. 
in terms of like how you you mentioned how the community can be weird. Do you also feel like at times they can be really not they, I want to say, I don't want to be too general, but you know, some elements of the community can be a little bit gatekeepy, especially towards new DMs, or do you think it's worse for new players? Um, I'll say this. I came from the, like, anime community basically right with doing like like uh, like let's plays and let's watches and um um and a bridge series right so comparatively the D D community is so much nicer yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not even close right so uh i will say that i think the issue is is that a lot of people want to get straight into this is how I want to play. And these are my new ideas. And they've been doing it maybe for a couple years and you know, they, they understand the mechanics and then somebody fresh comes along and they seem to forget how that, how that feeling was almost of, you know, and so it's, it's less of, you know, I'm purposely being mean because you're, you're new, new at yeah. it. It's more like, let, let's get to the fun part, right? Like I want to yeah. show you the fun part, but we're skipping the basics. Yeah. You don't even I, know I almost the fun. Fe- yeah. No, keep going. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I almost feel like it's a problem of er- like earnesty and 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 wanting to like open the whole door without letting them kind of like take their baby steps. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. And also, you know, in terms of like what I find fun, like what I find fun is really tough to the nails combat with lots of role play in between. That's what I enjoy. But you know what? Not everyone's gonna love that. My fans Rock have on. absolutely let me know. So um, you know that that kind of thing. That kind of thing is just simply not for everyone. I do recommend people at least try it out. I would love to, if more people you know tried the style because I think it's a lot of fun. But you know, tactics analog is not for everybody, and that's okay. Yeah. Like that's all good. What you find to be fun and what you want to rush into may not even be what they end up loving in the first place. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and it also depends on, you know, the kind of campaign and the kind of DM you have. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some DMs who, like, like you know, I, I guess a great example of, like, people who would watch a, a Matt Mercer campaign versus a Brendan Lee Mulligan campaign yeah. are two incre- incredibly different campaigns. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, oh, one thing I do want to ask. So you talk a lot from the player's yeah. perspective, obviously, because you talk about specs. But um, do you play more or do you DM more? Uh, DM more. Dang. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I was a player recently in that ages of I but I haven't played as a player in a minute. Um, instead, uh, I did do a, my last game was actually a one shot. I played for a bunch of newbies. Everybody was fresh except for one. And, um, that was a lot of fun. Hell but yeah. I was like, oh, it'll be a four hour one shot. But because like, you know, I was trying to like show them the ropes and give them a little more opportunity to play around. It ended up being six and a half hours. And uh, it'd be the we way it be. <laughs> they had fun, but I was exhausted Just by, by the, end the end of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, oh man, first time play. Like when I first started DMing, man, I had, dude, I had no idea what I was doing. Like encounter design, yeah. no freaking clue, no idea how balance around player abilities. Narratively, yeah. I didn't know how to like present. I mean, go, looking at like my notes for my first ever session versus looking at my notes for like my last, not my last ever session, but the last session I ran is yeah. insanity. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, excuse me. Um, there is a, uh, huge degree of, of talent it takes to actually like be a DM that's like decent. And I think that, I think that folks, um, especially players like, like, I feel like some people are like, I can DM and they don't exactly realize kind of what goes into it. It's, it's yeah. almost like having a, a, a second job. Yeah. Sometimes I try not to frame it like that, but I mean, I don't want to hide the fact from people like, look, you do need to work on this. Like you can't just do nothing. But the, the the key is like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I I freaking love prepping for D and D. Like writing out my. I do too. Of, yeah. I mean, yeah, what about I, you? I, do you? Yeah, I absolutely. I love okay, prepping. Great, awesome. I I have like a million ideas, and I'm just like, ooh, this will. What if they go here and and they meet this gnome, and his name's Bibbly Borp, and he's gonna try <laughs> to sell them some crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. It's perfect. Yeah, and they never go that way, and then you're like, "Well, Bibbly Borp doesn't appear, so." <laughs> well, he can appear. He can appear later. That's that's the neat yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I the fun always, thing about it being a DM. I I love um I love 
like prepping i mean i've recently been just world building just because like for this campaign i was like sitting there thinking you know i should really organize out the i mean jesus when did i start playing 20 when i started writing this out like 2016 so like eight Ooh. years of lore i've written we should we should start organizing that so i've started to organize it and it's like the most fun i've had in a long time it also gives me something to do with my hands because i don't know about you but i hate watching tv without doing anything like i need to do I got something it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do you have ADHD? I'm, I'm diagnosed. Dude, ADHD. I have no freaking clue what I have at this point. <laughs> like, I, I have here's anxiety. Here's what's funny. You just, you just <laughs> mentioned that I have one, one and two Pokeballs on my desk right now that I'm just fiddling with while we're talking because I've been fiddling like... with the, with the, with the camera top of my There DSLR you go. Yeah. There. Maybe yeah. I do. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been, it, it's been workshop. Like I, I was joking around with my friends. We were playing. Have you heard of Helldivers 2? I, I've seen things on it, but I haven't, I haven't played it yet. It looks, oh my it God. looks fun. It is, it is the best after D&D party game I've ever played like in my really? life. For, for a while, cool. since the beginning of 2023, we've been playing Minecraft after games. Uh -huh. And, and now we've, we've, we've jumped off. Well, we, we're, we still play Minecraft because like not everyone has a PS5 to play Helldivers 2 or a PC yeah. that can play Helldivers 2. But like, you know, when we're not playing Minecraft, we're probably jumping onto Helldivers. It's really fun. And it, it's just like, I don't know why, but I don't know. The energy of the game, the energy of my D&D game just it gets enhanced if we get like a solid dub in like a game that we're playing together like when we get a win together cooperatively and then we jump into D and D, I i don't know like the feeling is just better that's cool that's that's a cool idea yeah I mean, do you have any pre-game rituals that you engage in as a dungeon master uh because i'm old uh a lot of my <laughs> crew is uh like just getting off work when we play they'll play on like a tuesday um so i had a long running campaign but everybody was just getting off work so they're kind of shaking off the uh, you know, getting feel. fussed at by their boss, you know, uh, yeah. but that was all right. So every once in a while, I'll start like rolling my dice and like, I'll be like, okay, that's a 20. And then I'll roll and be like, all right, that's a, tw that's a 12. And then I'll roll and be like, okay, that's a 10. I'll stack them all up at the highest <laughs> number. Be like, that's good dice now. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. For me, it's, it's either playing. Well, when I, when the group joins, it's playing hell divers or Minecraft. But before then it's usually belting the critical role theme song as loud as I can. And oh, my <laughs> that that's the pre it gets you hyped up it gets you in the in the mood you know You're now like which ready. one though both which of one? them <laughs> okay of them. okay i i, See, go, I, I do it in sequence i was a really i was a really big fan of the season two animated intro yeah the mighty nine yeah yeah oh yeah that one's shit. that one's like probably the best intro to any animated thing i've ever seen like it's actually like a phenomenal intro got you got all the yeah. characters yeah got the music everything's solid and the animation at the end with the red dragon popping up amazing but you know campaign three they got the animated intro out by the same people and honestly like the in terms of the composition of the animation itself it's very impressive like it is yes yeah. it's really solid yeah i do i do feel that um adventure begins is a slightly better song than it's thursday night i really yeah. love that yeah but I, I do, yeah, I do agree with you on the song. Your turn to roll is amazing, but... Um, oh, yeah, your thank you, yeah. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, it's like, it's so good. I, I, was, I was so, I was legitimately shocked when they changed it because the animated show uses your turn to roll. So I was like, oh, this is, yeah. the, this is the Critical Role song. Have you seen Legend of Vox Machina, by the way? I have, both seasons. I liked it. Dude. I was like, because I was expecting, you know, a fan service like, whatever, you know, I'll have fun, but it's not going to be anything crazy. This is like really good <laughs> like it's yeah very I mean, I was, solid i was i was really impressed like i watched it with all my D, &D party they've never seen critical role and they they loved it they loved it so much well and they brought in pros i was watching some of the behind the scenes stuff um the animators were uh the same people who did legend of Korra, yeah, Korra which i loved yeah, yeah. um they're and, legit yeah yeah exactly legit and you know of course they're all voice actors so they know a lot of these people anyway it felt like one of those things where it was like everybody who's in it is in it you know this yeah. isn't just a paycheck we're, we're doing this for the love of the game and a paycheck you know yeah, and a paycheck. yeah the paycheck is nice too you know but yeah. i was but the moment i knew like i'm probably gonna love this is i don't know if you played world of warcraft I, wow, I missed it. I broke. I, I, I grew up broke, so it was the <laughs> monthly thing that my parents didn't want to do. You know what yeah. I mean? I get. Yeah. I get what you're coming from. Yeah, I saved up every penny so I could get that sub. Those first few months were 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 some good things. But yeah, I played WoW when I was a kid, and 
you know, a little bit into being an adult. And when when they announced that the composer behind some of the best songs in World of Warcraft cinematics will be doing the music for Legends of Vox Machina, I was like, Oh, look at that. Say less, dude. <laughs> that's that's where it's at. That's it's some dope. good stuff, though. Yeah. But hey, anyway. That's not Bear McCreary, is it? No, Bear. Mc- if it was Bear McCreary, I think I would have an aneurysm. I love his music. Oh, but me it's, too, dude. It's Neil. I, Ac- it's Neil Acree. Okay, okay. Yeah. I've heard that name. Uh, I don't remember from what, but I've definitely heard that name. Probably from Overwatch. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He also did Overwatch. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably that. Um, yeah, but I've been. Yeah, I I love Bear McCreary. I even I even love his stupid Godzilla song from the, stupid from the Godzilla, Godzilla movie. Stupid Godzilla song. That song is awesome. What okay, you yeah. No, it, it rocks, <laughs> but it's so silly that it's on my playlist because it'll be like it'll be like some hip hop and then, you know, some like R&B and it'll be like go, go, Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> Dude, I love the soundtrack yeah. for King of the Monsters was next level, but his music for God of War Oh, oh yeah, that's the, that's the good shit. That's that's some good stuff, man. Apparently, he also did Battlestar Galactica. Like, I was talking, telling my dad about it, oh, and he was like, oh, my God, I know that guy. And I'm like, you do? From Battlestar Galactica. I'm like, oh, my God. Dang. He really has done everything good in life. <laughs> Dude, dang. Your your dad must be uh, old school. Battlestar Galactica was forever ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, he's pushing 60s. But, yeah, he's still um, – but, yeah, he he yeah, he yeah loves Battlestar Galactica. He loves, loves Battlestar Galactica. And that that's means, like, cool. when he saw The Mandalorian Season 2 and saw um, What's-Her-Face as – as the as the Mando lady, he was like he was so hyped. <laughs> you should have seen. Really? It. Yeah. That's that's cool. It's good that he's happy were because the Niners just lost the Super Bowl, uh, so you know he's kind of distraught. <laughs> 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 Never seen a man so broken in my in my life. That's yeah. It was rigged, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Now I buy into all the conspiracy theories. Now I, I'm a believer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a believer now because because I Niners didn't. Fan. Yeah, because I didn't get get what I wanted. That's how conspiracy theories work. But that's anyway, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but honest, I mean, I don't know. Are you a football guy? Everyone seems surprised when that. I played football um, Dang, back in the day. Yeah. yeah um, not not into high school, uh, but when I was in middle school, and so there was a love there. And then I was actually in the marching band of my college, so I went to the football Ooh, games. What'd you that play? Way. Trumpet. I played saxophone. No way! Cool, yeah. man. Yeah. That's great. Dude, Did you play oh in college God. too? Oh, man, in college I clocked out. Wimped I don't out. blame you. Yeah, yeah I was gets old. Uh, what did you? When did, or do you still play now? I wish. No, I picked up my trumpet about four months ago, and um, I sounded like a hot bag of sh- bag of shit. <laughs> like it really? was so bad. You know what? Yeah. I picked up my saxophone a couple of weeks ago because you sent me your character concept, and it's yeah. the guy from Casablanca, and I was like, dang. I gotta play it as time goes by, like now. I pulled up the sheets. Nice. I didn't sound. I, I didn't record myself. If I record myself, right, I just right, went right. back. But I didn't sound bad. Yeah. Benefit of having a nice horn, though. Sure. Yeah, that's true. I love. I loved playing trumpet, um, and especially during college, I started getting like pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know toot my own horn haha <laughs> no um but uh i didn't get like amazing or anything but i was like i'm feeling this i i feel like i feel like i'm like decent now um and then uh my second year of school uh i decided to go ahead and quit the marching band so i could focus on studies and stuff more and fell off of it and barely picked it up since so unfortunately i'm i'm just terrible have you, now. Have you seen the movie whiplash <laughs> Uh, I've seen, I've seen the memes for sure. Yeah, I had, it's not, I, it wasn't that bad. It was not yeah. that bad, but I had a, I had a teacher who had the intensity and that, that just, that I, I don't know why people think that's a good thing, dude. Cause it, it burns you out so fast. Like you just so don't want to yeah. go and you don't want to do anything. And I like, even after I left his band, I, I still like, I still didn't even like I had no enthusiasm like I only oh, played yeah. during lessons like I never like practiced on my own anymore like it just sucked like I went to college at like you know we have a college football team that's like fairly famous so uh, my college was pretty big but they treated this shit like we were in the military like <laughs> yeah. you had to like stand at attention and 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 like salute and stuff and I'm like bro like we're we're out here playing instruments it's not that big a deal yeah um and we had one guy, he was famous for saying idioms incorrectly, right? So he'd be like, don't count your chickens before they race or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, 
And he hit us one time with a uh, with one that was so funny. He he stood in front. He goes, "Nobody out here, nobody out here is doing what they need to be doing. So either you don't give a shit, or you just don't care." And the whole place erupted in laughter because that doesn't make any sense. Sense because you, you you don't care either way. You gave me two <laughs> options. They're the same thing, brother. Either you don't give a shit or you just don't care. And we were all dying. <laughs> Yeah, I oh man, I had yeah, the 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 sad thing is like I really loved music, but like people always say like oh, if you have a tough instructor, they push you to be better. Nah. Nah. They just push yeah. you to just they just they they make you give up way sooner. You burn yourself out so fast trying to impress them. Like yeah. I a memory that's burned into my mind was he had me stand up and say, "You are and just in front of the whole band say like, "You are the sole reason why we are not progressing right now. It's your fault." Really? I like, I, oh my god. I wanted to I I will tell you right now, in that moment, I was just like, Jesus, take me now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take, of course. Take me, take me out so... of here. <laughs> Let me die. Let me get Damn. get me out of here. Guy. Yeah, that guy was I, I saw him again because I was practicing for state. I went to state rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him walking up the stairs and he was like, Hey crispy. And I was like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've never walked down a flight of stairs that fast you have you should have seen me and i was carrying my my horn is not light all right yeah, I, yeah. I had never had that much adrenaline in my life that was crazy <laughs> yeah now fuck that guy man yeah fuck that guy him. was crazy anyway hey we're talking about music horror stories or in your case like a kind of a glory story i don't know but do you have any D <laughs> ones <laughs> well, kind of so h- hilariously um i've had a really good experience with uh most of my people I- i've got one that's like I don't think anybody really want to hear it. It's not even that interesting. But mostly it's like players being like ridiculously dumb. Um, I've got one who, dude's hilarious, uh, but he he seems to always make like the silliest mistake. So I'll I'll go ahead and let you know. We were playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a part in it, and I don't want to spoil this for people who want to play it, but there's a part in it where... There's there's a mystery going on and the party can come across a uh, necklace of fireballs, right? And um, you know what that is, obviously. Like it's, it's a, a necklace, necklace that of, casts the balls. Mm-hmm. That's right. You got little beads, and the beads, you, if they break, fireball, right? Mm-hmm. So they pick up the necklace, they investigate it. Nobody is a wizard, so they can't cast identify or anything like that. Um, so they kind of don't know what it is. They know it's magical. And the idea was, I thought that they were going to go like, take it to somebody and, um, uh, get it appraised. Basically this guy, he was like, all right, he chucks one of the beads into the air and kicks it. And does it shatter upon hit with hitting the foot or shatter upon hitting the ground after the hitting the foot? It shattered on his foot. Oh, well, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And he cast fireball on himself. Um, and like he was two, he was two hit points away from dying completely. Um, and, uh, he, he, you know, exploded this alley, uh, uh, almost killed uh, the rest of his party and everybody was pissed at him and I'm laughing my ass off because I was like, bud, like, why would you think that's a good, good idea? Yeah. No, I've, I've only had one permanent player character death and was it their fault? The- I, uh, dude, it was it was a series of unfortunate. They were cornered by cowboys that summon demons, and you know, um, <laughs> you know, when when you're fighting dudes with guns and yeah. demons, and you have a sword, like it's just you know, it's not it's not exactly an easy fight. So yeah. you know, they were cornered, and she got she got hit by a bu- she was. We didn't know how much the paladin was getting hit. But uh, it turns out she had really low hit points, and she was surrounded, and somebody got a sneak attack crit on her, and I was like, oh, it does, you do, you take like 54 damage, and everyone's like, ooh, and I'm expecting her to be down, maybe like one death save down or two death save down. She's like, no, Crispy, I think I'm dead. Like, dead, 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 dead. And I was just yeah. like, wait, what? I had no freaking clue. I mean, I have no idea what I would have done if I knew that she was on low hit points. I'm kind of glad I didn't because that was like a narratively really poignant moment and it got my yeah. party to really focus the... Cr- they focused up. But yeah, no, it was, yeah. it was crazy. What about you? Funnily enough, same guy. Um, <laughs> he so, so they went through this... Um, I'm sensing a theme with this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's great. Um, 
he we they went through a um a castle and there was like a kid who was like this kid apprentice that they they were saving Mm -hmm. and um while they were investigating um i was like okay so this is a magic castle he's got magic stuff I'm going to give you some good stuff on a decent investigation check. If you hit me a net 20 on an investigation or an arcana check, you're going to get something rad. And he does, obviously. Of course um, he does. Sure. <laughs> so he hits a net 20, and I gave him a wand of wonder, right? Which is the thing that, that is. <laughs> it does random effects based on a, a D, D100 roll, right? Nice. Wow, well, magic the item. Hell yeah. Yeah, so uh, he got this Wanda Wonder, which was a a boon for him and a a terrible idea for the rest of the party. Um, as they as he kept casting it, and it would do like a, a, a see like a like a fog cloud of butterflies appears, and you know you guys can run around, or it would cast. Uh, he, he I think he threw out a rhino at one point. That was hilarious. Um, and then eventually, you know, he's like, okay, you know, everything that's hitting me is not too bad. Um, he's, he's a bard, so he's in his bardy thing playing in a bar and he goes, I'm going to cast the wand of wonder on myself. And I said, you want to cast? wait, hold on. You want to cast it on yourself? And I was like, he's like, yeah, I was like, roll that D 100. And, uh, he cast fireball again. <laughs> and he- he blows the windows out of this bar, sets I mean, the col- whole place on collateral fire. damage. How was that? <laughs> it was off. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna say everybody was like, you put the wand to your head, and they started running. So okay, let- great, great, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> that way, you didn't murder this entire bar of bar, innocent yeah. people. Um, but yeah, he exploded the so, and it was actually the bar of a friend of his who was like another player character. So I'm sitting. He's like. I'm like, you, you guys are going to have to figure out amongst yourself how much he owes you to fix the bar. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, so he's uh, he's almost killed himself at least twice, probably more. He's he's developed lycanthropy twice by accident. Um, he's... Uh, <laughs> He's a nut, so. No, I, I I love it. I mean, I when I see that's the kind of thing I like because when at least like with you guys, I'm assuming you can laugh it off. Like in spe- you mentioned lycanthropy, and yeah. I know my audience have heard about this guy before, so sorry if this is like your fifth time. But um, the there's this. I was playing Curse of Straw for my first ever D and D campaign, which you know it, it's a choice. But um, yeah, in that in that campaign, there are werewolves. They exist, and they can they they might give you lycanthropy. It might happen. Not zero percent chance. They encountered werewolves, and this dude, wizard, he was he was pissed. This guy was pissed off because he's like, "Well, what if I become a werewolf?" And I'm like, "Well, well, I mean, we'll we'll figure it out from there." And he did not like that answer. He did not like that he was fighting werewolves. He was pissed they were in the encounter. He complained the whole dang fight, which was like forty minutes of complaining. So, um, and under, and and. And our, our rogue, she gets bitten by a werewolf. And, oh, she fails to save. She has lycanthropy. And, of course, like, I had a cure lined up if they didn't want to be a werewolf because, like, duh. But, yeah. um, but he did not care at all that she got lycanthropy. You know, she gets it. He, he was talking crap about, like, oh, you're going to ruin our characters, blah, 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 blah. But she gets it. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even help her to get the dang cure in the session because that, that ended up being the, 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 the uh, impetus for the rest of the game. He didn't even, like, bother to lift a finger to help. I was like, I was pissed. But at least with your guy, like, when he loses, he's chill with it. <laughs> Yeah, what was hilarious is that they went to they had to go to the same person the second time. So he shows up and he's like, uh, "I got I got bit by a werewolf," and they're like, "Again?" again? And he's like, uh, yep. "Yeah." <laughs> Actually, the first time was a were rat, and the second time was a were boar. Hey, so, what's so wrong with were rats? I think those those guys are cool. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of them in Waterdeep somehow. So I wonder why. But anyway, yeah. I think we have talked. You know, I think we talked a lot about your channel. We did yeah. a decent amount of time on horror stories. And I think, okay, so to end off the show, I got two seg ideas that I'm kind of like workshopping in my brain. Now we could either, either we could talk about your D&D character that you're going to play in my game and we can like Ooh. workshop together. Live workshopping or, or I can go to D&D Beyond, go to home for subclasses and sort by lowest. Oh. They're both. Yeah. Well, we can always, remember, we could workshop the character off camera too. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep that a secret. I wanna, I wanna see the shit. All right. 
first and foremost, we have the, the uh, you're going to need to help me out on this pronunciation, man. It's a samurai okay. thing. It's an anime okay. thing. Okay. I don't know if you saw the face I made. Uh oh. Can you see? Uh oh. Can you hear? Still hear me? Oh, I hear you fine. Yeah. Okay, great, sweet. Um, I don't know if it, if I if you know it's because of the face I made, but I don't watch anime, so this is a little bit new to me. But anyway, here I sent it into Discord. We first have this samurai thing. Double your sneak attack damage at third, sixth, ninth, twelfth, fifteenth, eighteenth, and twentieth level. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so not only am I a weeb, uh, I actually took Japanese in college. Oh, uh, heck yeah. Which I respect, I by know. the way, because Japanese I is actually a really difficult weeb. language. Um, so I think the right pronunciation of this, if it's not a typo, would be Aba Ajirai, <laughs> which is, I, I have to assume, is not, that sounds like gobbledygook to me. I'm not that good at my Japanese vocabulary, but I don't think that means anything. Um,. <laughs> And so the Abajurai Samurai, which is, uh, that's, okay. All right. So uh, do you want me to read it off? Because this is hilarious. Or do you want to read uh, it off? Uh, no, you read it off? Because this is like your thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hey, do you want to play as a, uh, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're so good. So you double, you double your sneak attack at third, sixth, ninth, twelfth, and fifth. Okay, so you just you just have double sneak attack every time you get sneak attack. Okay. Well, no, no, but so, you keep on doubling. So, like, at third, it's double. At sixth, it's quadruple. And then... Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right, because that's, that's how that's written. Yeah, that you would, be, you, would do, you would be doing, like, oh, my God, so much damage. And then look at Samurai. I love the name Samurai Increase. What a great, great the little... The Samurai Increase, very yeah. in, Very, in, very in, uh, involved and immersive naming conventions with this one. So, <laughs> Chose... Chose. chose one type of damage add 3d6 of whatever damage you chose you choose to any attack you ever make i feel like that's slightly <laughs> less powerful than the double sneak attack constantly throughout the level up process i feel like this is a okay. little bit of a step down well you only get the double sneak attack once per once per round right so it's <laughs> you got to get the, the extra 3d6 on there yeah so at third level, that would be, okay, let's say you're using a short sword. That's 1d6 plus 4d6 plus 3d6? Good lord. Okay, so that's 5, the uh, the the 8d6 of damage at level 3. That's a Fi fireball at fireball, level 3 on one guy. Yeah, fireball on one dude. That that I think that's perfectly balanced. I don't see what the problem is. And then we Yeah, have without also a save. We also have extra attack, which apparently has just the the same exact description as the the last thing we 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 just read off. So I'm assuming you get this 3d6 on your extra attack too. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Even though rogues, I don't believe normally get an extra attack. I might be wrong. No, hold on. Look at that. So it's not even extra attack. It's extra damage. Yeah. So you get the samurai increase, and then oh. you get extra damage. I can't read. No, you're good. But like, yeah. So you get you get your samurai. I is that a typo? Did he just accidentally put that in twice? <laughs> no, yeah, I think I think this. Is, let's be honest. This is probably a troll. But we 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 do love some good bait here. And honestly, with some of the stuff I've seen on RPG horror stories, it might not be a troll. <laughs> okay, hold on. The, no, this next one's hilarious. So Semkurat. That's definitely not Japanese. But Samkurat loyalty. loyalty. Call upon ten samurai. <laughs> I assume from the Wake ether. Wake the fuck up, samurai! <laughs> We've got some goblins their HP to kill. Is, their HP is fifty. Their AC is sixteen. Their weapons are a katana, a longbow, and two daggers. They are all drow. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be a meme. The, the drow thing seals it. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Oh my okay, god, this on. makes it even better. This makes it even better. The, a Chinese style dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweep the dragon. All the powers of the Sam Karat are unleashed within you. A Chinese style dragon bursts from the ground and eats you. You are now that dragon. <laughs> After seven hours in this form, the dragon lands at the nearest land and fades into you. What, what does that even mean? In this form, your HP is 150. Your AC is... What, does it even tell me what level this happens at? No, it doesn't. So no. I'm assuming at third. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It all it, Everything we're getting is a third, third level. third level, yeah. 
Oh, oh my god. god, this is amazing. Ground speed. I like how the ground speed is like 15. Like why? It's so slow. It doesn't need to be that slow. I, I feel like that's a bit of a nerf. Fire breath is 3d6 times six. Why don't you just make it? Tw- why, why don't you just make it 12d6? Their only yeah, so the fi- to- your final breath attack is your HP increases by a hundred. Your AC is now twenty, and any attack you make becomes thirty D six plus sneak, sneak attack. attack. So now hold on, that might be the level twenty capstone for Rogue. I've been bitching about this whole time. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we that's what we need. We need just thirty D six damage. Plus sneak attack. Plus sneak attack, which I think would add like 100 d6. So this is 130 d6, which my players do occasionally actually roll in my VTT just to cover the screen and dice and mess with me. But but yeah. That's amazing. That is is some truly amazing things. Every person who has ever mistaken me for Japanese, they're the people who wrote this subclass. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's very good. I got you. Um, Next up, we have a ranger spec. We get some ranger okay. love. Okay, wait, hold on. My, my, I just realized my camera's like yelling at me that I'm out of battery. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. All right, I give up. Yeah, I don't know where it is. I looked for it for like two seconds and then I decided to give up on that. Anyway, let's move on. All right. You're... Wolf pack hunter. Let's see. Ooh, wolf pack hunter. Yes. What if it's actually oh, good? I... What if it's good? Yeah, you I know? got what Zach if... Galifianakis in my head right now from The Hangover. Yeah. That's going to be amazing. At third level, okay, hold on, hold on. go. At, yeah, at third level, a wolf decides to come along your journey, and and wait, come along for the journey journey that you are taking. Why the f- you got to write Why these better, you? guys? Yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you're, you're, I love. Okay, first and foremost, what CR is your average wolf? Like one. Yeah, it's, not it's that very much, low. Man. Like maybe a half. It's not much. Oh, a dire wolf is like a one, isn't it? Yeah, a wolf is one fourth. Eleven. God, yeah. So this is a wolf wolf, cub. So it's probably even weaker than the quarter. uh, The quarter. Yeah, it's like one eighth. (laughs) Yeah, one eighth. What? What a threatening, threatening beast for you to 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 bring along your new journey. But anyway, we also have wolves bite. Your melee attacks do one d twenty of damage. You are doing one d twenty, baby. Wait. <laughs> so when they say your melee attacks, uh, they're just talking about like that could be anything. That could be a sword swipe. That could be a headbutt. That could be literally like you throw a chair at somebody. It's one d twenty. Now kick him in the shins. One d twenty damage, baby. <laughs> Oh my god! I think this is perfectly balanced as all things should be. There's a reason why, by the way. Like someone asked me, like, why don't we roll d20s for damage? I'm like, because the spread is just way too much. There is like a very compelling yeah, reason huge. why no game yeah. does that. Yeah, your wolf brother. When you deal 15 or more damage with a melee basic attack, your wolf can make a melee basic attack against the same target. Okay, but why though? <laughs> Actually, I kinda, how would it be limited to when you do enough damage? I, I, yeah, I first, I think it's too much of a nerf, but I do think that if you're doing monster design and you have, like, for example, like a summoner who, like, on bone, like, I have summoner creatures that use a bonus action to summon 1d4, like, weak minions with one hit point. So I think that this is actually kind of an interesting mechanic to give them because I can give the minions a reaction for whenever the thing that summoned them deals X amount of damage, they can make a melee attack with their reaction. It's an yeah, interesting yeah, yeah, threshold sure. for, for monsters. But for a player, like, this is just this is just weak sauce. Are we trying to make rangers yeah, th- worse? <laughs> well, that's why, you need the, that's why you need the 1d20 damage. <laughs> well, what if you roll a 1 on that 1d20? You're still going to feel weak yeah, sauce. Yeah, you fucked. <laughs> Nat 20 on the dice. Nat one on the damage. Yeah, that would be a ama- one two points. I I I, I watched um, on my last session. They were fighting a Mananungal that had like stone vision and stuff, which is not something uh-huh. an actual Mananungal has. But it was cool. So um, the 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 barbarian like jumped onto her like she's flying, and he's like midair stabbing her through, and he rolls a natural twenty. And we're all like hyped up. We're like, oh my god, this is awesome! And he rolls on his great sword two ones. Oh god, yeah, two no, ones, man. I was like, I, I, my heart broke. And then she dropped him off into a pit of acid. And yeah, that was fun. Anyway, so next up, 15th level. Okay, hold on. So at Ascension, this is your 15th level capstone. Okay, so the first one's not the worst, I guess. You wear the armor of a wolf, which gives you a plus five to AC. Okay, a plus five to AC at any level is pretty good. Uh, but the wolf's fang is just, that's, 
This is pointless. Your, your arrows or blades are made from the teeth of your family of wolves. Yeah, so you what? You killed all of your boys? <laughs> well, true. And also, what does that do? Who? <laughs> they it, it they now no do 1d20 damage, which was already... A yeah, no, now, now I'm assuming what if they do 1d20 damage? Yeah, okay, okay. So your, your wolf fangs do 1d20 damage, but you got to rip that out of some puppy's mouth. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You killed all your boys. <laughs> I'm assuming. All right, Bosco, we're here for the game, boy. Come yeah, on. sorry. Yeah, I'm, I, I love the idea that you raised a wolf cub. The wolf cub had a bunch of babies, and then you just like violently. <laughs> also, oh, like the wolf's yeah, coat, you wear the armor of a wolf. What if you're also slaughtering your boys for that armor? Yeah, you're Cruella de Vil and your fucking puppies <laughs> yeah, over the here. Cruella de Vil Ranger spec, bro. That's awesome. yeah. All right, well, oh, hey, sorry to it. whoever wrote this, but it's shit. This is hilariously bad. Oh, no, this is hilarious. I, the Zoomer subclass. This is oh, okay, so they're they're trying to say like a speed, like a speedster oh, oh, like from oh, Marvel or something, right? I thought it was right? going to be a funny thing about kids always on their damn phones. Aww. Oh, but listen to how it's written. This is, hold on, this is funny. The Zoomer is the most agile archetype from Rogue. It can take fast and high dashes and jumps, climb and swim very fast. Convenient? No. <laughs> I mean, in a game that so often funny. discourages so movement, I don't think so. But yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're first, okay. So at at third level, you're just you're you have your speed doubled. Sixty feet of movement speed. Holy shit! Okay. Uh, and whenever you go up by two levels, you add one dexterity ability point. You have advantage on any dexterity rolls involving acrobatics and strength rolls involving athletics all of that like spelled wrong but wait so you have <laughs> you just get advantage on dex and strength rolls or at the yeah. acrobatics and athletics rolls i guess and every two levels you grow up your dexterity just goes up by a point so that's you you, you could ha easily have a, a like 30 dexterity yeah. by level 20 Oh yeah, and you or or alternatively, if you don't want to invest that much in decks, you could also just like dump your points into other things. Like you could have the ultimate spellcasting rogue, or get every overpowered feat you've ever wanted in your life because you just no longer need ASIs. That's right. Yeah, that's wow. perfect. There's a reason why the this game is... does not do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a very compelling. Okay. Reasons. The the speed of thunder as a bonus action, you can run into your opponent and cause one d four damage without an attack roll. After this, you return to your original position before the bonus action. That one's not the worst. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, it reminds me of the Mercury ability from. Did you ever play Smite? Um, oh my god, Smite my my warlock, my warlock. Every time I'm we're playing Helldivers, I hear him screaming in the background about some 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 strange god name and Smite. I'm like, what the what's wrong with him? Oh. <laughs> So Smite was like it, I I loved it back in the day. I, I don't think it's any MOBA, fun right? anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I I played a lot of Mer Mercury, which is Hermes from Greek mythology. Um, Roman mythology. And uh, he had an ability where he could like essentially do exactly that. He could like run at somebody, hit and them, and back. then bounce back. Yeah. I will say, um, so. I was looking at Griffin Salbag mechanics, and one thing I really liked from a cloak of theirs, though it was never used. Uh, which sucks, but basically yeah. there was an effect that it had where if you expended all of your movement speed on a turn, it would give you like a bonus, which I really loved. Incentivizing movement and giving you a bonus for it. I also love enemies that like make a player into sort of like a hot potato. Like I created an enemy that when they attack you with a spell, it does 3d6 damage. But if you don't move on your next turn, it does 3d6 more damage. You need to expend all your uh, movement. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, it, so yeah. I, I like stuff that forces movement like this, and this is kind of like an interesting like take on that. Also, that, that part's not the worst. Speed of Thunder we can keep, especially at ninth level. That's not overpowered at all. I'd even let you add Sneak Attack to it. At I'd also, I yeah, 1d4 damage is just not that much. Yeah, that's not, that's not much. But at 13th level, you get extra attack which is like way too late to get extra attack like that's also that's this is hilariously a rogue. long <laughs> yeah this is a rogue yeah i mean you, you can get a you can give a rogue extra attack at level six or seven that's fine blade singers get it at level six sword yeah. boards do too so i'm fine with that and the speed aura you excel an aura that double the ally speed in an area 90 feet which gives you advantage and gives them advantage on athletics and accurate so they get the same thing you do i mean okay like you said before, speed in D&D in is just not 
not that great. You're, you're going to yeah. be zipping around a lot. That's fantastic. But you have to eventually hit something. <laughs> yeah. Also, attacks of opportunity are, are horrible. And also, like, in terms of, like, the insane range of some attacks, like, dude, how, how, like, dragons can fly X amount, like, God knows how far. Yeah. And they their breath attack has like whatever the range is on their breath attack, which is insane. And that's like assuming you're you're not using the amazing dragons from Matt Coville's Flea Mortals. But um, you know the 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 in terms of in terms of one of my main problems with Five E, like it is like a lack of utilization of movement mechanics like i like it when movement is a big part of the game which is why i like flea moral so much because it incentivizes movement and forced movement moving the players around without yeah, their yeah, consent yeah. as a major mechanic of a lot of their monsters and i like that because it forces them to be tactical like my barbarian he often when he's not thinking finds himself outside of the range of enemies he can't hit them with his sword because he literally can't get to them and you know he had to start planning around that and figuring out ways to mitigate that and he has since achieved the ultimate way to mitigate that which is just a ghost horse he can summon with a bonus action so you know basically now he's fine <laughs> but before the ghost horse he can summon with a bonus action you know he had to worry about a uh, 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 force movement mechanics this actually is kind of interesting i like the concept of it it's not the worst thing i've ever seen what about you <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the the other two were probably silly. It's, it's better than the I, racist I samurai. Yeah, yeah. This one's more just like you're just not getting anything out of it, really. I mean, you're getting a lot of movement speed, but I feel like you could achieve this exact same thing. the The Blade Singer plus haste is so crazy. I think I had um, I had eighty feet on a normal uh, movement, so that equals two hundred and forty feet per round. You're going buck wild, like like. I remember um, in in one of my games, um, the uh, there was a rogue that was getting away from us, and it was theater of the mind stuff. So the DM was like, "Yeah, they they take their they take their dash action, their their bonus action, and their um, um, and their movement, and they just book it away from you." I was like, "Okay, how far are they?" And he was like, "This far," and I was like, "Okay, I'm on them. <laughs> just it's, I'm just oh, I'm just there." That's awesome. See, that's the kind of stuff that I, I absolutely love. But anyway, I think we are wrapping up on the time. My camera is screaming okay. at me. But we are not done with this conversation because I think we have a character to talk about. But you guys... Yes! You guys won't get to see it. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, if you guys enjoy... Well, but before we... Before we... Wait, I forgot. almost forgot. We have one last segment. We have one last thing to do real quick. Let's do it. it thing of the week. Hit the thing. Okay, this is like a thing that we do where you just say yeah, one yeah. thing this week that made you really happy. It doesn't need to be D&D related. It could be literally anything, like good lunch you had, like you have a good brunch Ooh. or something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Oh, you want me to go ahead and do it? You you can go first. I could go first. Okay. Go first. Well, my thing of the week, uh, my buddy, one of my best friends in the world, gave me a bottle of 16-year log of Lulin. It's, uh, it's whiskey. Ooh. And yeah, he gave it to me for my 30th birthday, and I popped Aww. it open last night. Uh, and it was some of the smoothest whiskey I've ever had. I'm not even a big drinker. Um, and I was, I was just digging this so much. So thank you. I got you for that. Just and, thinking um, about that, dude. Oh my yeah, God. There's nothing more satisfying than that so shit. Delicious. Dude, I'm yeah. jealous. Oh my God. I'm jealous. I haven't had. So, what about you? I haven't had a good whiskey in like. <laughs> Jeez. Like, I don't think I've had like, <laughs> like I, since my friend's sister's graduation party it's been like forever since i've had like yeah. a decent bottle of something that wasn't twenty dollars and cheap <laughs> like, yeah is... yeah no this is one of those where it's like you don't even put ice in it you just want to feel that burn yeah. a little bit so smooth oh my it's God. really good stuff smelled like smelled and tasted like um like 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 a campfire with friends yeah. that's <laughs> that is so dang you should be a connoisseur hot huh? damn that was some that was some yeah. good describing right there but um yeah for me oh god i don't actually know my thing of the I, I didn't actually think of it this week oh right oh. my thing of the week my thing of the week this week is probably going to be hell divers 2 i gave in nice. i gave up i i played the game and with my DD party plus one other guy who is not in my DD party but we had so much fun uh, the four of us slaughtered the enemies of democracy together we enforced freedom <laughs> by force across the galaxy we were the last line of offense spreading managed democracy across the universe and it was it was amazing we fought with That's honor gorgeous. and died a lot but it was a lot of fun like seriously <laughs> i cannot i cannot recommend this game enough it is like the ultimate me and the boys game regardless of what gender you are it is it is so much dang fun like 
recommend it a hundred percent. Go check this game out. It's only forty bucks, and the servers are no longer broken, so you can you can actually play now. So congratulations! Hell yeah! There's a reason why it's like the top game on Steam, like a week after release. It's it's amazing. But yeah, hell yeah! That's it for real, for real now. All that's left to do is for roll out the red carpet. Jesse, what you got going on this week, man? What you got? You got got a new video. Ooh. I'm assuming. New video coming out. Yeah, it's going to be the Fey Wanderer Ranger this week. I think when this video comes out, though, I'll actually be in round four. So uh, on my community tab, I actually allow my uh, audience to vote on what comes up. So I think when this video comes out, I'll be on round four, which means uh, three new subclasses in the community tab. Um, and I think I've already decided on what those are. So if you're watching this, you're going to know first. Um, let me, let me, let me look. Um, that will be a choice between the Rune Knight Fighter, the, uh, War, uh, Domain Cleric, or the Phantom Rogue. So, yes, so you heard it here first on Crispy Tavern. Yep. Hi. So anyway, <laughs> as for me, if you guys enjoyed them, please do leave a like. If you want to see more of our content, then you can check out our Tabletop Tavern Tip series. We, at this point, will have passed our 100th episode of D&D &D Advice on this oh, channel, which is crazy. I still don't know what I'm going to actually do with that. But, yeah, it's linked in the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the... No! No! And almost, <laughs> you were almost there. The camera died. No! Oh, no! Farewell, my child. You fought with honor and bravery. But, yeah, you guys can't see me anymore. But if you guys enjoyed, then please blah, 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 blah. I was at comments. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment. You might be a terrible subclass. So let me know you made it to the end of the video. Uh, in essence, like, comment, subscribe. We'll both see you all next time. Farewell.